so when you're doing this first thing you want to do is get your truck up and stabilized I've got a jack stand piston jack on the frame and then I've got my small jack under the lower ball joint okay make sure everything's stabilized because you're gonna be doing some hammering all right okay so before we get going too far on this thing I went ahead and ordered two new lower ball joints this is what they look like and you can get these from the local parts store for 50 60 70 80 bucks I got mine online and I paid 11 bucks a piece for them okay and we're gonna have problems with ours right here where the tie rod in goes in I have got a fork in there because they say you can hammer that and it'll frock break loose well mine didn't so I went and got a pickle fork and I actually had to cut the end of the pickle fork off of the, of the two forks because as they went in they were hitting this so I had to shorten those um, and I've been hammering the hell out of that and still can't get it to break loose so I think what I'm going to end up doing I was going to just cut the tie rod end off I've gone ahead and ordered two new tie rod ends I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish unbolting these bolts and then just turn the steering the other direction and then just unscrew the entire assembly that way I'm not out here hammering and beating my brains out now the problem I foresee having is this section here and everything that's inside of here is actually what came out so this when I unbolt it this piece is going to come off so I'm, I'm foreseeing having the same problem getting this unseated from the control arm um, I'll let you know how that goes but uh, what I've done is I've got the the uh, nut on the old one screwed down and uh, loose and screwed down I've got a jack pushing up on this and it's actually got the weight of the vehicle on it right now so I'm on my jack stands but I've actually got the suspension completely compressed um, to the point that if I give it one more pump it, it's going to start lifting the vehicle off my jack and my jack stands so I've got the upward pressure on this and I got the downward pressure if you look in here from my springs pushing down that lower control arm okay so the thought process is hopefully I can hammer the side and the top of the lower control arm once I move that assembly out of my way and hopefully I can get this just to break loose and if, if that happens life is good um, we'll go ahead and bolt this on bolt the, the spindle and all back on and then I just need to wait on my new tie rod ends which are actually going to take a couple days to get um, it, I ordered them on a Friday night they're saying a Tuesday before I get them which is a little long um, I got them from Rock Auto and uh, usually Rock Auto is pretty good about two day delivery so they may show up here on Sunday morning um, but right now the delivery date set for Tuesday so that's what's going on with this thing guys back later all right so we got the assembly out that came out easy enough I didn't even have to break this loose I broke loose the nut which kept broke loose really easy the retaining nut this simply spun off by hand and these four bolts broke loose really really easy but I want to show you something I don't know if you can see it inside of here where it failed I can't really get a good picture of it it's absolutely dry in there so uh, my bad I had not been uh, lubricating the front end so it's a testament to at least annually doing a front end lubrication on your vehicle um, this is absolutely dry in here no grease at all right so upon further inspection I noticed something this is the factory lower ball joint there is no grease fitting on this so 
that's a need to know. <coughs> um, the new one has got a grease fitting. So before I install it, I'll go ahead and install the grease fitting on it and uh, go ahead and pump it full of grease so we don't have this problem in the future. Okay, so here's the part that was broken off in the lower control arm. This actually goes through the lower control arm and then this castle nut goes on top of it. So best thing for you guys to do, since you're working on the ground, which is difficult at best, um, go ahead and get a jack, uh, preferably a floor jack, put it on the bottom of this. Unscrew this, okay, put the castle nut, or put the jack on there, and then you want to uh, jack the suspension up. That's going to jack it against the spring, okay, and you want to jack it up until uh, it supports the weight of that side of the vehicle, okay, so it's going to jack it just off of your jack that's holding the vehicle up okay then jack your vehicle jack back up to where it's tight okay so you're gonna have a ton of pressure on this okay and then you can take a pickle fork and run into that in my case uh, it took about five hits with a pickle fork and it popped right out okay so this was the least difficult of this entire operation um, if I had to, to do it again and I'm gonna do it again on the other side. I would just go ahead and break this loose, take the four bolts out that hold the ball joint assembly on, and go ahead and just take the um, tie rod end loose and t pull the whole thing out as an assembly. Um, that should be a hell of a lot easier than what I tried. And honestly, you're gonna to need to be doing that anyways. If you've lost a ball joint, your front end assembly is a mess anyways. Probably need to replace everything. And having said that, if you take a pickle fork to that tie rod end, you're gonna destroy that boot. So you're gonna to have to replace it anyways. So I took the long way around to uh, solving this problem, primarily because I was trying to get this thing on its feet sooner than later. But uh, and it cost me a lot of time. So let's put this back together and we'll go after it. So I finally got the tie rod in. in. And it comes with everything you need. One thing about it, these do have a grease fitting on them. Um, the factory ones do not. So yet another good reason to just go ahead and replace everything. All right, so we'll get this on and get this thing on its feet. So one other thing I want to mention, when I pull this off, I backed off the retaining nut just a little bit, just enough to loosen it, and then I spun this off, counted the revolutions. Having said that, the original retaining nut is just about where it belongs, so I'm not going to replace this retaining nut. Um, there's not a lot of pressure on it, so I'm going to use the old retaining nut so I can position this as close as possible as to where it originally was so at least for a few days I can go without uh, an alignment until I get the other side done All right okay guys so got the, the truck put back together I want to review a couple things with y'all if you decide to do this do yourself a favor and just take this entire thing apart as an assembly you know take this bolt off or at least loosen it. Go ahead and loosen those. Jack this, put a jack underneath here so you got pressure on it. Pop this loose, okay? Then you can go ahead and take those out, pull that bolt off, and then you can simply stretch this out and spin this entire assembly off. Okay, it's a hell of a lot simpler than trying to get this off of here in most cases especially if you're on the ground and you don't have any leverage and you don't have any room to swing a hammer okay so after that um, I want to go over a couple symptoms I had when I was doing this or when I was when I was driving the vehicle right before it failed my steering got really tight and it would lock side to side or would have a hard spot side to side to turn it and be stiff and then turn and, same thing the other way and it also was not returning back to center when I released the steering wheel okay 
um, and honestly I thought that was a, a problem with the rack or in the power steering um, now that I've test driven it everything is fine my, my steering is super smooth don't have any problems side to side on it and uh, and it returns back to center quite quickly now also my alignments a little bit better even though I haven't had the vehicle aligned previously I, I would drive and I'd have to have the wheel just a, just a tad to the right side I wanted to track off to the left a little bit okay just slightly previously now it tracks dead straight and uh, that makes sense because if this if this ball joint was out of whack um, that's gonna mark knock the geometry off in the suspension so even with a wore out suspension that I've got with bushings everything right now it, it appears to track really really well so if you guys got any tightness in your uh, uh, steering be suspect of these areas here one thing that did send me down the wrong uh, path previously I had, had a little bit of tightness in my steering and it went away but I investigated it and went online was reading everybody's comments which is the problem with going online and uh, a lot of people the in the steering column as it comes down there's a coupler in there okay um, apparently that coupler gets stiff and can cause some stiffness in the steering um, I just assumed that that was what it was and then it freed itself up and it went about its happy business um, that was not the problem the problem was this failing um, and again if you guys are going to do this do both sides um, they wear at the same rate the side near the curb your right right hand side is going to wear a little more because of the bumps and garbage that goes on the on the road on that side of the road is, is typically rougher than on the inside of the road but uh, go ahead and change these out at the same time and if you got time go ahead and change your upper ball joints out I'm gonna do my upper ball joints I'm gonna put that off for a couple weeks um, that's it guys so I hope this helped you all out like I said make you make your life easy just do this in this assembly um, I think this part and this part online I got about 25 bucks tied up between the two of them so it's a hell of a lot better than going to the parts store and you got a hundred bucks tied up between them or going to Toyota and who knows how much money you got tied up at Toyota for the parts um, hope this helps guys appreciate you watching thanks hey guys before I go I want to point out one more thing um, this truck's got about 250,000 miles on it and I'm a pretty easy driver uh, I'm a very defensive driver and I just don't beat up my vehicles um, so I would say a typical driver probably needs to start thinking about these ball joints at about 150,000 miles um, definitely get a front end uh, your front end checked out at least once a year uh, they'll be able to tell if the ball joints are getting loose or not but I want to give you some experience here years ago I mean like a century ago I had a 71 Firebird and I lost the front lower ball joint on this side okay when it happened the wheel just basically shot straight up in the wheel well and continued pointing in this in the forward direction so when that happened it wasn't a, it wasn't really a violent experience it was loud and uh, shocked me a little bit but I never lost control of the car and uh, the car just came to a slow stop okay um, in this case when this one failed and, and when, I, when I lost the Firebird I was doing about 40 miles an hour when this one failed I was turning into my parking spot okay so I wasn't on the highway so I was doing like maybe a mile an hour half mile an hour and it failed and the wheel completely went back and turned 90 degrees and you saw those pictures at the beginning of this video um, and it was an extremely violent and loud experience okay um, having said that if that had happened at road speed definitely would have pulled me into the curb probably would have flipped the vehicle and I probably would have been injured okay and most likely would total the vehicle out so and the reason for the difference is on the old cars you had a steering box up front and your tie links were up front so if you lost a ball joint because the wheel is trailing it's going to tend to 
it's going to tend to continue to point forward, okay? And if it fails, it's going to pull the car this way, but not violently, okay? Um, in the case of this vehicle, it's got rack and pinion, so the steering link is at the back end back here, okay? So when it, that ball joint failed, the wheel is actually pushing on that steering arm and it just swings sideways. So heads up guys, if you even think you got a problem on your front end, go ahead and get it taken care of uh, way ahead of time. Like I said, this was a astoundingly violent um, collapse, especially considering how slow I was going. All right guys, I think that's gonna be it for my deal. Let me get off my soapbox. Y'all have a great one. Appreciate you watching.